Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Truth Seekers Podcast. A truth seeker is someone who wants to know the truth. They search for what's true and they won't rest until they find it. I am a truth seeker. And if you are too, then you've come to the right place where we will search for truth each week in the stories of the Bible. We have been learning about David. David had been anointed king by Samuel when he was just a teenager. He had fought the giant Goliath and won. He had been invited into the courts of King Saul to serve him and play his harp for him. God was with David and gave him favor in everything he did. But as time passed, the circumstances of David's life began to change. As King Saul grew more and more jealous, he became increasingly angry and determined to kill David. In today's story, we are going to see how things only get worse for David. Have you ever felt like one bad thing after another was happening to you? Maybe you had a day where everything just seemed to go wrong. You couldn't quite figure out why things were happening as they were. David was watching his world crumble and fall apart. Everything he knew and loved was slowly slipping away from him. What would he do? Let's find out. After David had been with Samuel in Ramah, he returned to find Jonathan, King Saul's son, his best friend in the whole world. He said to Jonathan, What have I done? What is my crime? How have I wronged your father that he is trying to take my life? Never, Jonathan replied, you are not going to die. Look, my father doesn't do anything great or small without confiding in me. Why would he hide this from me? It can't be true. But David took an oath and said, your father knows very well that I have found favor in your eyes. He knows that you and I are best friends. And he must have said to himself, Jonathan must not know that I am trying to kill David or he will be upset. Yet as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, there is only a step between me and death. That is how close he is to killing me. Jonathan looked at David and said, Whatever you want me to do, I'll do for you. So David said, Tomorrow is the new moon festival, and I am supposed to have dinner with the king. But let me go and hide in the field until the evening of the day after tomorrow. If your father misses me at all and asks where I am, tell him, David asked my permission to hurry to Bethlehem, his hometown, because an annual sacrifice is being made there for his whole family. If he says, Very well, and does not get upset, then I am safe. But if he loses his temper, you can be sure that he is determined to harm me. As for you, Jonathan, show kindness to me, your friend, and remember the covenant you made with me before the Lord to be my friend and protect me. If I have done anything wrong, then kill me yourself. Don't hand me over to your father. David wanted to make sure that Jonathan was not on his father's side. He needed to know that Jonathan was not planning with his father to kill him. Never, said Jonathan, if I had the least inkling of an idea that my father was determined to harm you, wouldn't I tell you? David asked, how will I know how your father responds when you tell him where I have gone? And Jonathan had an idea. He said to David, Come with me, let's go out into the field. So they went there together. Then Jonathan said to David, By the Lord God of Israel, I will surely sound out my father by this time the day after tomorrow. If he is favorably disposed towards you and does not plan to kill you, I will send you word and let you know. But if my father is inclined to harm you, may the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if I do not let you know and send you away safely. May the Lord be with you as he has been with my father. So Jonathan promised David that he would remember their covenant as friends, and he would let him know if it was safe for him to return. But Jonathan had something to ask of David too. Jonathan said to David, But please show me your kindness, like that of the Lord, as long as I live, so that I may not be killed. And do not ever cut off your kindness from my family, not even when the Lord has cut off every one of David's enemies from the face of the earth. Now let's stop here for just a minute. 
You might be thinking, what a strange thing of Jonathan to ask of David. Why would Jonathan make David promise that he would not be killed and to show kindness to his family? David was about to be on the run for his life from King Saul. What did Jonathan have to worry about? Well, let me tell you something about Jonathan. Jonathan was a very wise man. He knew that David would someday be king. He knew that his best friend David had the anointing of God and the Spirit of God living inside of him. Jonathan knew that David would be a great and mighty king one day, and when David was one day king, he would have the power to get revenge on King Saul and his enemies. But Jonathan wanted David to remember his kindness to him as his friend when he became king. Even though his own father was an enemy of David, Jonathan wanted to remind David that he would never be his enemy. He would always be his friend. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, May the Lord call David's enemies to account. Jonathan was now under a covenant with David. Jonathan was safe in the friendship of David. No harm would come to Jonathan under the covenant he made with his best friend. So Jonathan had David reaffirm his oath to protect him as he would protect David out of love for him, because he loved him as he loved himself. They were as close as brothers. Then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon festival. You will be missed because your seat will be empty at the table. The day after tomorrow, toward evening, go to the place where you hid when this trouble began and wait by the stone Azel. I will shoot three arrows to the side of it as though I were shooting at a target. Then I will send a boy and say, go find the arrows. Now listen closely. This will be the secret sign. If I say to the boy, look, the arrows are on this side of you. Bring them here. Then come because as surely as the Lord lives, you are safe and there is no danger. But if I say to the boy, look, the arrows are beyond you. Then, David, you must go, because the Lord has sent you away. Did you get that, true seekers? Did you get the secret signal between Jonathan and David? David was to hide out in the field, and if he heard Jonathan tell the boy that the arrows were far beyond, that would be David's signal that he was to run and get away from King Saul as fast as he could. So David hid in the field on the night of the new moon festival, When King Saul came in to eat, he sat in his customary place by the wall, opposite Jonathan. But David's place was empty. Saul said, Why hasn't David, the son of Jesse, come to the meal? Jonathan answered, David earnestly asked me for permission to go to Bethlehem. He said, Let me go because our family is observing a sacrifice in the town, and my brother has ordered me to be there. If I have found favor in your eyes, let me get away to see my brothers. This is why he has not come to the king's table. Then King Saul's anger flared up at Jonathan and he said to him, Don't I know that you have sided with the son of Jesse to your own shame and to the shame of the mother who bore you? As long as the son of Jesse lives on this earth, neither you nor your kingdom will be established. Now send and bring him to me, for he must die. Jonathan, trying to defend his friend David, said, Why should he be put to death? What has he done? But Saul suddenly hurled his spear at Jonathan, his own son, to kill him. Then Jonathan knew that his father indeed did intend to kill David. Jonathan got up from the table in fierce anger and did not eat because he was grieved at his father's shameful treatment of David. So in the morning, Jonathan went out to the field for his meeting with David. He had a small boy with him, and he said to the boy, Run and find the arrows I shoot. As the boy ran, Jonathan shot an arrow beyond him. When the boy came to the place where Jonathan's arrow had fallen, Jonathan called out after him, Isn't the arrow beyond you? Now, true seekers, do you remember what the secret sign was? What did it mean when Jonathan said, The arrows are beyond you? If you said, David must run away, then you are correct. That was David's signal. 
Jonathan said to the boy, Hurry, go quickly, don't stop. The boy picked up the arrow and returned it to his master. The boy knew nothing of all of this. Only Jonathan and David knew what the secret sign was and what those words meant. Then Jonathan gave his weapons to the boy and said, Go, carry them back to the town. After the boy had gone, David got up from the south side of the stone and bowed down before Jonathan three times with his face to the ground. (laughs) They wept together, but David (laughs) wept the most. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine the pain in David's heart? He knew he must leave his best friend in the whole world. He knew his life was no longer safe. He had done nothing wrong, but now it seemed everything was against him. He had to go. He had to let it all go. Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for we have sworn friendship with each other in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord is witness between you and me and between your descendants and my descendants forever. Then David left, and Jonathan went back to the town. Dear True Seekers, what a sad day for David, how his heart must have broken, and how he must have wondered what God was doing. But we will see that God is not finished with David yet. God still has a plan for David, and he may be taking a path that he did not expect to take, but God would be with him in the journey. One lesson we can learn from this story is the covenant that David made with Jonathan. Do you remember that a covenant is an agreement between two people? God had made a covenant with Abraham that he would be the father of many nations, and God kept his covenant to Abraham. God had made a covenant to Noah by sending a rainbow to show that he would never flood the earth again, and he kept his covenant. A covenant is a very serious agreement. David made a covenant with Jonathan in friendship that he would never harm or kill Jonathan, even though his father, King Saul, was out to kill him. In that covenant of friendship, Jonathan was safe. When the day would come for David to be made king, he would remember the covenant he made with his friend Jonathan and to Jonathan's children. Did you know that when you ask Jesus into your heart and believe that he is your Lord and Savior, that you enter into a covenant with him? That's right, you are in a covenant with Jesus. Just like David and Jonathan covenanted to protect one another, So Jesus makes a covenant to save you, rescue you, and protect you. Your friendship with Jesus is one of the best friendships you could ever have. And when Jesus makes a covenant, he never breaks it. You never have to fear that he will change his mind or turn his back on you. He covers you. He's got you. You are in a forever covenant with him. That should give you much peace, my friends. If you'd like to read today's story in your Bible, you can find it in 1 Samuel chapter 20. Stay tuned and be sure to listen to next week's episode. What do you think will happen to David now? Where can he go? He knows he can never go back to King Saul, but where is he supposed to go? What is he supposed to do now? We'll just have to keep reading to find out. Let me pray with you before we go. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have made a covenant with us. When we ask Jesus into our hearts and believe that he is our Lord and Savior, we come into covenant with you, where you promise to never leave us or forsake us. You promise friendship with us. You promise joy and peace and eternal life. Even though we may be walking through hard times just like David did, we can still trust even in those hard times that you are good and that you will always be with us. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to save us from our deepest, darkest sins. We can never be good enough to earn your love, but you offer it freely by giving your own son to die for us. We choose to accept your gift of Jesus in our lives, and we choose to enter into covenant with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining me today, True Seekers, and thank you all so much for leaving your reviews in iTunes. If you haven't had a chance to go and leave a review, I would appreciate it so much. It continues to help the podcast be found on iTunes as people are searching, and it gives a chance for others to learn about the gospel message and to know more about God and grow in Him too. Thank you so much, and I look forward to our time together next week.